Well, hello, hello, citizens of the world. Vashem's here with another episode of I Learn and Earn um, in an attempt to inspire, empower, and connect the citizens of the world for you guys to create success and achieve financial freedom. So my guest today is Dr. Crystal Morrison, and I'm super excited to have her on my pod show. And I met Dr. Morrison a few months ago, actually, since I joined the 10X Incubator. And we met in person at the 10X Incubator Immersion back in October. And it was just like such a wonderful, wonderful connection. Dr. Morrison, or should I just call you Crystal, like usual, welcome, welcome to this pod show with um, Iron and Earn. Hey, Shaba, great to see you. Thank definitely you. Crystal, definitely Crystal. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't going to go very formal on you, not today. Um, <laughs> before we get started, and I know we have so much to talk about, so many things we need to cover, and I will really try to do my best to stay within the time frame because uh, I know you're busy and we all have such like very, very packed schedule right now. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself before we tap into being a tech founder, being uh, focused on kids with special needs, being a mom, being an entrepreneur and a scientist. I mean, I just have, I can go on and on and on. I'm just like so excited to tap into all these different aspects and I hope our listeners will get a huge benefit from you. So tell me a little bit about just Crystal Morrison. Who is Crystal Morrison? Yeah. Uh, so you covered a lot there, actually. Um, <laughs> so uh, I I am. I'm a scientist by training. I'm originally from uh, Arkansas. I live in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania now. I am a mom. I'm a wife. I uh, am a scientist at heart, a leader, and I'm a tech founder. And uh, I'm constantly intrigued by you know tackling massive challenges and having an impact what is impact to you i i believe impact to me is using my time and talent and my energy to contribute to things that matter to me and matter to the world so i i see you as very diversified and we spoke so many times you and i about how you position yourself in the market and be within this niche versus that niche so how how do you manage all these multi facets of who you are in being a scientist in being um a tech founder it, it, just these many different how did you come about having all these many facets of you well, that is quite loaded, my dear. <laughs> um, so I, I think that um, if, if you take a look at all of us, there's so many different facets to, to our life. And we tend to put ourselves in a box like I am this or I am this. And, you know, what I've really embraced over the years and gotten a lot better of embracing it in my 40s is that I'm constantly learning. I'm constantly learning every single day. And if I ignored that learning, I would still say, stay in this box or this box, but I'm learning every day. And, and there are things that I get excited about and I find interesting and I want to pursue and learn more about. And that's the beauty of continuous learning is you can bring on a lot of different boxes, a lot of different categories. And, and that's certainly what I've done. I think though that if if I look at that um, that theme of of what um, you know resonates for me, it's using again using my time and talent and energy to to have a bigger, broader impact on things that things that matter to me and and things that matter to the world. And you know, as a scientist, I, I like looking at big, massive problems, whether it's in you know materials and the environment. As a mom, I want to make sure I'm using my energy to be a better mom and help other parents be great parents and advocate for their children. Um, and so it's it's constantly about having an impact and not only empowering myself, but empowering others. Um, and so there there are some themes, although it seems like I'm, I'm very diverse in all of the different things I work on. I love the word empower. And a power yeah. and empowerment comes from a sense of self-worth and self-confidence. And it, this is something that a lot of entrepreneurs and startups, um, especially with tech companies, struggle with. 
Yep. The whole idea of going out with that empowerment and feeling confident about what they're doing. Tell us a little bit about how you build your own self-confidence, building this this mindset of a go-getter and the unstoppable of who you are in really going out there and just accomplishing and doing all the amazing things that you're doing. How do you build your self-confidence? Well, um, I'm not going to pretend that that it's always there. Uh, I mean, that's that's just being honest and transparent. Um, honestly, what I have to do almost on a daily basis when when things over are, are overwhelming or when I really have to psych myself up to say, look, you you've got to go out there and practice what you preach. And and what I try to do is remember that, you know, I've, I've had a, a great life and I've faced a lot of obstacles like so many people and I face challenges. I've also pivoted in my career multiple times. And what I can confidently say is that every time I've, I've taken on a new challenge, I really have, I really have done a pretty damn good job of owning it and succeeding. And um, I, I don't take that lightly. I don't take that lightly because I put my, my heart and soul into the things I work on and my my ability to succeed in a lot of different things is because i give it 110 percent, and i learn and i and i absorb and all of those things um but i try to remind myself you know whatever you're facing today whatever you're facing tomorrow that seems unsurmountable you've faced a lot of other crap just like it and you've tackled it and moved forward and that's <laughs> that's the that's the confidence boost i have to give myself pretty frequently so in other words, you look backwards into how you overcame certain obstacles and you tell yourself, well, I've done it here. I've done it there. I've done it there. So I'm just going to yep. go ahead and give it my so all. So I'll do it here. <laughs> and this is really the way to be. The best way of moving forward is to do the inventory of your successes and yeah. failures as well, and then learn from them and see what is it to avoid moving forward and what is it that you need maybe to 10x moving forward. Um, great tip there, great insight, and I hope that people can really think about it and connect what they have done well and what they have not, what they have done not so well to learn and help them move forward. So I met you through the 10X um, Incubator, an amazing community that we are Absolutely. part of. Before I start talking or I ask questions about Market Village, um, you and I connected through this uh, ecosystem and we became, I think it was a natural evolution into becoming uh, accountability partners. And we mm -hmm. meet at least once a week and we talk constantly about ideas and brainstorm together. And we set up goals moving forward or challenges that we've had. How important it is for you, and it's not because I am your accountability partner, but how important is it for you that when you engage into this journey of being a tech founder or an entrepreneur or a startup to really surround yourself by like-minded people like we have through the 10x incubator but also having somebody really close to you that you can vent with and what does it mean to you to have this support system for those out there who are trying to do big things by themselves and they get burned out quickly and and they collapse so how how is it helping you and what does it mean to you so the support system is absolutely priceless uh it's absolutely priceless because i have had um i have gone on journeys before by myself and there's really no reason to go on this particular journey by yourself um being an entrepreneur um, and having big ideas can be very, very lonely at times. Uh, you often have many people telling you you're crazy, more people telling you you're crazy than supporting you. Um, yeah, all the time on the daily. And so it's, it's so important to, to surround yourself with people who are going through the, the same, you know, challenges and victories of creating a company and, and growing it. At the same time, there's so much you can learn from other people. Uh, you know, I view it as this amazing learning experience because these folks have had 
you know, experiences and, that I haven't and, and I can learn from them so much. So it's absolutely priceless to have, um, you know, a support system. And it's also priceless to have a support system that is, um, how do I say it? It's like legit, like, let's just get real honest, a legit support system, because there's a lot of um, different entrepreneur groups out there. There's lots of different groups that you can get involved in. And, you know, I know personally, I have to be very careful in choosing the people I surround myself with. You want to make sure you're surrounding yourself with high quality, positive people that are going to help you learn and you're going to help them learn. So that's absolutely priceless. Mirkat Village yeah. is your new venture uh, as a non-tech tech founder. Tell us a, bit, a little bit about the birth of the idea and what has happened until the 10x incubator and what is it that you're planning for? And I know you have a big event coming out next week. So yeah, absolutely. talk about all that. Super exciting things happening. Yeah, so Meerkat Village is, is actually not brand new. Um, Meerkat Village is something that my co-founder, Dan Richness, and I have been working on for the past few years. Um, Meerkat Village is the brainchild of, of Dan, and he and I met over three years ago. And when he told me about Meerkat Village, I immediately knew that I needed it and the world needed it. Uh, Meerkat Village is a software platform designed to bring together all of the adults that surround a child in need, to bring those adults together and build collaboration and communication to improve outcomes for that child. And we've been working together for about three years. We um, created a functional prototype. We have a web-based platform that we've released but we were really struggling with um, scaling the company and we were really struggling with um, you know getting getting talent and in, in areas that are not our strengths you know you you have to have a, a people with a lot of different strengths and other in order to truly scale a company um, that you know we were struggling to scale we were struggling to spread the word and we knew that we needed to develop the um, the iOS and Android app and also improve our UI UX um, aspects of the platform. So we knew that we had some big needs um, in order to scale the platform and 10x incubator came along and had a very fortunate opportunity to meet Jared and um, learn more about what he was working on. And it's an excellent fit for what we're trying to do with Meerkat Village. Um, we've partnered with 10X Incubator, and we are going to realize our moonshot of dramatically improving the outcomes for 1 million children in two years with Meerkat Village. And what is your strategy to bring in that awareness to families with, um, you know, with kids with special mm -hmm. needs? So when we originally started working on Meerkat Village, our go-to-market strategy was focused on more of a B2B business model, going directly to large educational institutions, healthcare providers, um, school districts, in order to sell bulk licenses to Meerkat Village. And it's a great idea. But of course, the sales cycles are, are really long and we were still really struggling, even, even with some early sales, to get the product directly in front of the parent. And mm. that's, really, that's really the heart of the problem we're trying to solve. That parent, that parent that's completely overwhelmed with you know, ha having a child that has special needs and all of these different people, teachers, therapists, doctors, coaches, you know, all of these different people in their child's life that care about the child, but they're not acting as a team on behalf of the child. So with 10X Incubator, we've pivoted our go-to-market strategy to really focus on going directly to the parent, parent like myself, who, you know, has experienced this myself with my own children. Um, and so we have a B2P, B2Parent business model, and we'll be focusing on 
you know, advertising and marketing directly to parents. Um, and also, of course, leveraging affiliate relationships to get Meerkat Village out uh, and scale the company. So you are a parent. Let's go back to yeah. that because it's, it's, it's a mother. Um, you are a, an executive advisor, a strategist, um, a scientist, a tech founder. How, how do you manage, you know, I mean, it's the bio is, is very, very impressive. How do you manage all that time and make it happen in terms of balanced life and everything in between? Yeah. Um, so sometimes I think that when we tell ourselves we're achieving work-life balance, that what we really have got to aim for is like work-life harmony, right? Um, sometimes, sometimes balance is a very tall order. Um, for me, um, I don't always do a good job of it, being honest, um, you know, <laughs> I'm just trying to be transparent. But really what helps me in terms of time management is you know, like so many people, you included, my my life revolves around my calendar and I have to be very diligent with my calendar and actually block off times, uh, time to work on specific things. Um, you know, you know, as, as well as probably many people listening that you could start your day off and very easily get distracted by, you know, all of the emails coming in and Instagram DMs and LinkedIn messages and spend your entire day doing nothing but, you know, chasing a lot of different activities. But in order to really get the work done and, and execute on, on the things you're working on, you have to block off time to focus on specific things in your day. And so that's something that that I do that I, I try to be very diligent about. And that does help me manage all of these different things I'm working on. So we uh, we connected in person during the uh, October 1st uh, 10X Incubator Immersion. Uh -huh. And we had we had three days together uh, just going through a different things. What was your your most um, memorable thing, I would say, that took place during the 10X incubator first immersion? <laughs> wow. Well, funny enough, the first thing that comes to mind is those crazy paint wars that we had. Um, totally fun. I mean, a, a blast. You know, all of us in a room throwing, you know, water balloons at each other, paint <laughs> balloons at each other. I mean, that's priceless. Um, I definitely. Um, you know, I have to say like the, the people that we met and got to work with and, and spend time with was, you know, what hands down I took away with, you know, everybody's so committed to what they're doing, not only the founders, but 10 X incubator, the, the staff that they brought on board and their commitment and their support and the level of intelligence and totally, um, you know, total commitment to what we're doing as a team is incredibly impressive. So next week on the 15, you have a big day, clearly, yeah. and today is the friends and family. Mm -hmm. How are you navigating this process and um, what are you hoping to get out of that, that, that event? Yeah. So you're right. So next next Wednesday is when we sort of officially kick off our fundraising round, um, our seed round of funding for Meerkat Village. We will be hosting a uh, friends and family night for potential investors and supporters of Meerkat Village. Um, it's, it's very exciting. How, how am I preparing? Well, uh, certainly spending a lot of time refining the pitch deck, uh, practicing the pitch deck but also reaching out to so many people who care deeply about the, the journey of Meerkat Village, what it means, what it represents, what level of impact we're going to have, which is going to be really um, significant. Um, so again, reaching out to people who, who I know deeply care about Meerkat Village and also people that care about me and are just interested in knowing more about all the crazy stuff I'm working on. Absolutely. And what is your biggest excitement through the process and the biggest concern or fear throughout the process? So my biggest excitement um, throughout this entire process, this entire journey is what I see on the horizon is 
parents, millions of parents and guardians like myself having access to this tool on their phone to be able to reach out and collaborate with all the folks that are supporting their kids and share ideas and be accountable and track whether their child's improving. Like that's the vision I have. That's the vision that Dan and I've had for day one. It's the vision I have today. And I have to tell you, it's it's that vision of, of seeing that parent feel empowered and being connected and seeing their child improve that drives me every single day. And the beauty of partnering with 10X is that that, that vision is even more tangible now. Um, and believe that it's going to happen. It is going to happen. And so that's definitely what, what drives me. Um, you know, just being transparent, uh, you know, fears, um, you know, and sometimes it's the fear of the unknown. It's the fear yeah. of knowing the journey that I've been on and, and Dan and I've been on together with Meerkat Village and the ups and the downs and the ups and the downs and, and knowing that there's gonna be hurdles we have to face moving forward, not knowing what those are. That's, that's kind of the, the fear that I have. Where do you see yourself? This is like mid November. Where do you see yourself a year from now? A year from now, yep. a year from now, we are going to have the Meerkat Village um, app launched. We are going to be onboarding parents and families to the app. We're going to have an insane amount of energy and excitement around bringing new users on board and and impacting impacting children and bringing their treatment teams together. Um, that's what I see a year from now. And I 110% believe that it's going to happen. In fact, it's going to happen earlier than that, but we'll go with a year from now. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it a year from now. <laughs> so a lot of entrepreneurs have great ideas and they chose to follow maybe a different direction or even a mindset or a thinking process like you and I broke away from. You and I had clearly an idea. We wanted to make a difference and we started talking to people, to the white ones. And then we partner with them to make that happen. This is what anyone, anyone should be doing with their ideas. So what do you think or say to those who have an idea and they're holding on to it like a precious little thing and they don't want to partner with people by fear of giving up equity or by fear that somebody might steal it. So what, what do you tell or say to those who are still in pre mode of taking action to make their idea happen and maybe save people's lives and impact the world. It, yeah, so what, what I try to remember myself and that I also share with other people is is your idea does does you and no one else any good whatsoever if it stays in your head, bottom line. Um, it, it's not doing you or anybody else any good. And if you truly believe in your idea and you truly believe it has the impact that um, is possible, then, you know, I don't think any one person can necessarily bring an idea to fruition by themselves. Um, you know, you might be able to, it could be long and painful. And there's, there's so much value in, in finding people that have skills that you don't to partner with and get your idea out there faster to impact people in the way that, that you see is possible. And it's really interesting because we were literally at the end of our broadcast and I wanted actually to ask you about, um, you know, like what would you tell people as call to action? What is your call to action and how are you planning for 2022 knowing that 2021 is about done? So how, how do you plan for 2022? And, um, uh, what is your call to action? Yeah, so my call to action for not only myself, but also for, um, you know, everybody out there is that if you are thinking of, of doing something, if you're constantly like woulda, coulda, shoulda, right? Like now's the time. Uh, now is the time. You know, we we have to actually live our lives every single day. Sometimes I talk about the dash, you know, the the dash that's going to be on your headstone from the day you're born to the day you pass and you have got to live your dash. And so instead of saying like, oh, I wish I could do this and I wish I could do that or 
or you need to get off your tail and just do it and make a goal and, and do it. And, you know, honestly, every year, my husband and I make a few goals for the year going to the year and things we want to accomplish. And it's really important to us. It's important to our family. It's important to our relationship. And um, I really encourage everyone, whether it's personally or professionally, um, make goals for yourself going into 2022 and accomplish them. Keep yourself accountable. Do like Shaba and I are doing and have somebody that you answer to on a weekly basis as to whether you're doing the things you need to do on behalf of your goals. And, um, you know, I have to remind myself of that, too, that accomplishing things takes action. Things don't happen if you sit on your butt all day long, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And I do enjoy our sessions as well, the accountability sessions, because for me, it's also a way to remind myself. And then I feel like every Tuesday when we come together to a call, I I have to have things done to, you know, to share with you and then celebrate with right. you. So I would highly recommend for people to find someone like-minded, non-judgmental, a very safe space that you connect with and you talk to once a week or every other week based on your schedule and then keep each other in in tune you know in touch with your reality with your time with your calendar with your dreams with your passions because we forget you know i mean we're having conversations and then at the end of the day we're getting so distracted by so many things so at least yeah. when you have this one moment per week you're like oh my god i'm gonna talk to crystal and I, I better show up and show up for her the way she's showing up for me. So that is really um, great to have. And thank you so much. Mm -hmm.